I'm professional organizer Katherine Lawrence, and since 2002, I've gotten paid to organize and declutter for others. In this video, I'm going to give you five strategies on how you too can organize and declutter for a living. I'll admit it's kind of a weird job. Uh, people invite you into their homes and show you their biggest messes and chaos, you know, the spaces that they probably don't show anyone else. But it's pretty great to help someone rearrange the space and just make living and working in their home easier and more enjoyable. Now imagine walking into someone's personal space, you know, their sanctuary, and rearranging it. I mean, it's pretty intimate, right? That's why before anyone hires you to declutter and organize their home, they need to trust you. And how do you build that trust? By constantly showing up, being visible, and demonstrating your expertise. Because getting paid to organize isn't just about tidying up, it's about understanding your client's needs as well as the principles of organization. Okay, let's dive into five strategies that gave me a career in organizing and I hope will work for you too. The first one is to understand your market. Diving into the world of professional organizing starts with a critical step, understanding your market. Just as every business needs customers, every organizer needs clientele. Decide what type of services would work best in your community. For example, if you are in an area with lots of families upsizing to new housing, you could focus on storage design. Or if you're in a community with lots of retirees, consider specializing in downsizing. Research what other professional organizers are doing in your area and see what fits with the experience you already have. Understanding your market is crucial. You know, it's not just about what you love to do, but also what's in demand. By identifying a niche that aligns both with your passion and the needs of your community, you're gonna set yourself up for success. Second strategy is to get some training. Now, organizing for others is completely different from organizing your own home. Efficiency and understanding your client's goals are really important. Getting some basic training not only refines your skills, but also establishes your credibility in the industry. Now remember, certification isn't mandatory and certification programs can take time and you'll want to work with paying clients while you're working towards a certification if you choose to get one. I would recommend getting some basic training that you can complete in a few weeks to get started and then building your experience over the years. I still learn new things working with clients or have to research some special technique, app, or product that's gonna help my clients. So you're never really gonna stop learning in this industry. Consider finding a mentor who works as a professional organizer. That was super helpful to me when I started. And if you're looking for a comprehensive course, check out my course, Selling Organization, in the description of this video. It's designed to equip you with all the essentials to kickstart your career fast. Next strategy is to build a portfolio. A portfolio is more than just a collection of images. It's a testament to your expertise, style, and the transformations you can bring about for your clients. Now, even if you don't have a desire to be an influencer or post on social media every day, I do like Instagram as a place to set up your portfolio. It's free and quick to set up and your customers can get a quick snapshot of the type of work that you do. Post about 30 images that reflect your organizing style and philosophy. Our portfolio is your visual resume. It gives potential clients a glimpse into your style, approach, and results. Okay, the fourth strategy is to practice practice, practice, practice. The journey from organizing enthusiast to professional organizer is paved with practice sessions because you will learn so much by stepping foot into someone else's home to see how they struggle with clutter and organization. Redo a friend's closet or home office, declutter a coworker's kitchen or playroom, take photos 
get testimonials, and use this experience to refine your skills. Practice not only hones your skills, but also builds your confidence. Every project completed, every challenge overcome prepares you for bigger and bigger projects. All right, our fifth strategy and last strategy is word of mouth marketing. In the world of business, your reputation is your currency. And there's no advertising more powerful than a satisfied client singing your praises. Tell everyone about your plans to launch an organizing business. Through these conversations, you'll get to know people's organizational woes and identify the pain points that you can address through your services. Word of mouth marketing is organic, genuine, and incredibly cost-effective. It's a great way to find your practice clients and your paid clients once your business is set up. Be sure, again, to take photos, get testimonials to build your portfolio. So take every opportunity you have to mention your new venture and then listen to people's responses about their challenges. Offer to help them out and see if a career in professional organizing is right for you. So what questions do you have about starting an organizing business? Drop me a line in the comments below. And if you're ready to get paid to organize, check out the links in the description of this video for my courses, free resources, and a link to book a coaching call. Please like and subscribe for more videos on decluttering, downsizing, and the business of organizing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.